Hey everybody, this is Mike Sabraki. Uh, I'm coming to you from my church. I'm actually in the chapel right now because people are inside praying in the main body of the church. Uh, we just finished uh, playing the 845 Mass, which was for my brother Ron. Uh, when I booked it, I didn't know it was Ascension Thursday. So uh, I started the day at a Mass dedicated to my brother. He was the intention. And uh, I want to thank my daughter Heather who came and played flute at the Mass. We didn't make a big thing of this. It, it was Ascension Thursday, but, but the prayers were dedicated and lifted up for my brother. So, uh, so today is a year since Ron passed, and uh, it's been an interesting year. I've, uh, I've, I've spoken to so many people, and uh, I heard so many wonderful things. I want to thank you all for your kind words. Uh, they really did help and uh, shed a whole other light on things about Ron that were not part of our life together. Uh, and I think that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I just want to share with you that the Ron Zabrocki I know and knew was not the same Ron Zabrocki you knew. He's my brother. Uh, we have a sister, Denise, and uh, he was our brother, and we would fight and laugh and play and celebrate things together and uh, heck we shared a womb together we're twins folks so uh you know we have a bit of a more of a history together and, or a different history than you would have had with him but um uh we, we spent time with cousins hi lou if you get to see this uh we spent a lot of time with cousins and friends and uh, but we grew up together and i think the memory i want to share with you that's flooding me today has mostly to do with church. You know that cool Ron Zabrocki that was this, you know, world-class guitarist and he's a producer and all that? Well, you know, he cut his teeth in church and, uh, in, and, and in Catholicism. He, um, we were altar boys together. Yes, Ron was an altar boy. And we would play the 645 Mass every morning. My parents probably hated that because we had to get up really early and uh, get dressed, washed up, get dressed, get fed, and uh, out the door, get to church in time to do the morning daily Mass. And there were people at that Mass. It wasn't like the old five old ladies. It was a good crowd, probably 50 to 100 people some days. Uh, so we were all to service. Uh, we were in the Boy Scouts. Uh, we cut our teeth playing in church. My brother played guitar and sang in the folk group at St. Stanislaus. And he was excellent and he loved it. He had such a wonderful time in St. Stan's. So anybody that remembers those days uh, will attest to that. We loved decorating the church for the different seasons and, and you know, we were up front with the folk group and we played the 1215 Mass every Sunday. And there were three, four hundred people at that Mass every week. Um, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, we, we played Godspell, a production of Godspell. I can't tell you how many times. Uh, so our youth, my mother, you know, did the altar pieces for the church. My father drove the nuns everywhere. Boy. Boy, do I, I'm, the, the apple don't fall, fall far from the tree if you look at my life right now. But um, I just wanted to share that the Ron Zabrocki that you all knew and loved, well, maybe some of that, this big heart and kindness came from how we were raised, you know. The church was a very big part of his life when we were children. It stayed a part of my life. My brother, it stopped for him. He, uh, he missed it. He would tell me many, many times. He truly missed his time playing in church. Something happened. Um, I was there when it happened that made him not just say, I'm not coming back here. And that was at St. Stan's. It wasn't, uh, you know, and it was nothing with a priest and it was nothing, you know, that you'd sue anybody over or anything, but something happened and, uh, it offended him. It hit him personally. And, uh, it was just something somebody said, and uh, he stopped attending. And I know he was sorry about that, you know, at the end of the day. And, uh, well, I'm still in church, and, uh, and, and I'm grateful for that. You know, like, when, why did Ron play guitar? Why do I play the organ? I could tell you why. When we were, like, six, maybe eight, 
uh, a guy came to our school that ran a music school and he taught two instruments, accordion and guitar. And when you're that young, my brother called the guitar and uh, I got stuck with the accordion. And of course, not the coolest thing to do. I mean, there's pretty good ska music with it and uh, John Cougar used it quite, quite successfully in some songs. But um, it was accordion, man, a polka accordion. But it, it, it gave me my life. It gave me my life in the church and a life of service playing, you know, as a music director in church. And I'm very grateful for that. So thanks for calling the guitar, Ron. And of course, Ron calling the guitar, Ron took that and that became his livelihood. So um, I just wanted to say on this day, I kind of just came to you today to share those memories, that side of Ron that some of you knew, but a lot of you didn't, you know, because you didn't grow up in our neighborhood and you didn't grow up with us, but uh, he was in church, you know, we were praying the rosary together, we were, uh, you know, uh, looking at the statues and uh, his faith was strong. When we started with telescopes, he would look up at the sky and, uh, you know, feel pretty small because you had to know that there was a God something bigger than us that um, was out there. And I guess he sees it now face to face. Uh, and where he is now, we shall all be someday. So redeem your time while there is still time, folks. And uh, I just wanted to uh, say nothing more except to say, I think of my brother as a brother. Somebody who fought together and played together and prayed and sang. And, we played in bands and stuff, but we started off in church, and uh, that's where I am right now. And uh, I'm clinging to those memories because they were pretty gosh darn diggly good. <laughs>